Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video we're going to be talking about uh, Angoro card reviews. And this will probably be the second to last because they've announced that tomorrow they're going to basically dump the rest of the cards. That's uh, Friday, I believe uh, the 31st of March. Getting pretty close to release now. But today we've still got 11 cards to do, so let's get started with Blaze Caller. This is a 7 mana 6-6 six, six elemental battle cry. If you played an elemental last turn, deal 5 damage. So uh, the obvious comparisons for this card are going to be Fire Elemental and Black Wing Corruptor. This is a little bit later game, and that's why they give it more damage, being able to deal 5 damage as a battle cry. Very powerful. Um, and a 6-6 six, six body isn't too bad either. That's uh, kind of like what you would expect from a slightly weak 6 mana minion uh, with a very powerful effect. So uh, overall, if you can actually get this effect to proc, it's a very solid 7-drop minion. Um, and likewise, Blackwing Corruptor and Fire Elemental were also very similar. Um, being able to deal damage as a battle cry and take out a minion before a moderately sized minion, for its cost, even hits the uh, battlefield, is quite powerful and a good tempo play. Um, I think uh, this will kind of see similar uses. Uh, now, obviously, a 7-mana minion is only going to fit into mid-range decks or control decks um, because, well, if you're playing aggro, you just you can't rely on getting a 7-drop minion, let alone a 7-drop minion that requires you to play an element on the previous turn. Uh, because of that requirement, though, uh, you will have to play a pretty control uh elemental deck in order to play this consistently. So, uh, yeah, control decks, basically. And as we've seen so far, and basically with all the class cards that are elemental, it basically comes down to Shaman or Mage. So if you're making a Mage or Shaman control deck that's elemental based, this there's a good chance this is going to make the cut. I, I think it's very solid in the archetype, and elementals are looking to be quite powerful, comparable to how dragons were before. Let's just hope that it doesn't play out exactly the same, where basically you play your dragons on curve and you win the game. Uh, aka Dragon Priest in the current battle. So next up, Servant of Kalismos, uh, another card that's very similar to the Dragon Priest archetype, Draconid Operative, of course, being the one I'm referring to. Uh, this is a 5 mana 4 5, so minus 1, minus 1 in terms of stats, but it can be played in any class. If you played an elemental last turn, discover an elemental, which is going to be pretty good for a uh, control elemental deck, because obviously, you need as many elementals as you can get. All of your elementals, uh, if you play one last turn, you get an effect, so having another elemental to play is going to be good, even if it's a weak elemental. But if you have a strong elemental, that elemental might require you to play some other elementals. Um, and basically, the, the theme is that you want to play a lot of elementals in your elemental deck. <laughs> and this is both an elemental and gives you an elemental. So in terms of playing the value game, this is a solid option, especially since as your Drake is rotating out, you're not going to have as many draw options available to you. And uh, this seems like a solid bet. Because, I mean, remember, as your Drake was a uh, 5 mana 4-4, four, four, drew your card, still got played, and this gets you one extra health. Yes, it doesn't have the spell damage, uh, but the discover effect, the stat line, uh, it all seems to be pretty solid for control elemental decks. So once again, probably Mage and Shaman. Next up, uh, and I like this guy a lot, the Ravenous Pterodex, or Theodex, I, I don't know, however you say it. So uh, it's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four beast if you destroy, well, you have to destroy a friendly minion if you have one, and when you do, you get to adapt twice. Now, uh, assuming you get good adapt rolls, uh, you can give it plus 3 health and plus 3 attack as your two adapts, making it a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven without the overload drawback. Yes, you have to sacrifice something like a 1-1 one, one Imp, but if you're playing a Zoo deck, um, there's going to be a lot of pretty crappy minions that you don't mind getting rid of in order to like set up something big on the board. I think this is definitely going to see some play in Zoo. It also has Curator potential by being a beast. And um, yeah, it's just overall pretty dang powerful. And yes, it has that drawback thing that Warlocks are getting really popular for. Instead of Discard though, it's Destroy a Minion. And uh, that mechanic's been seen more in other games like Magic the Gathering or Feria. If you've played that, it's a new game on Steam. Pretty decent. Uh, card game, of course. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see destroy your own minions to gain an effect coming into Hearthstone. It's, uh, it's an interesting concept, anyway. And I think this card will see some play because it's quite powerful in general. I mean, most of the adapts are, are pretty good. I mean, you might get a Divine Shield instead of plus 3 health, but I mean, that's, that's comparable. It's not too bad. All depends on the situation, but you do get to discover them, so, well, 
discover, choose one of three. So you should never have a terribly bad uh, adapted minion, and that's nice. So next up, uh, we have the last Kaladosaur, um, which of course gives you Galvadon, and we've talked a bit about Galvadon. Yes, his effect is confirmed, but uh, what's new here is that the quest requires you to cast six spells on your minions, which generally is going to mean buff spells. You could also try healing spells like Holy Light or Forbidden Healing, um, but mostly you're talking about Blessing of Wisdom, Blessing of Might, ble uh, Blessing of Kings. You can't play the Seal of Champions anymore, that's rotating out of standard. Now they are adding a couple new buffs, and uh, Silverman Silvermoon Portal from Karazhan is still in play, which wasn't too bad, just never really saw any play simply because it was outclassed, most of the buff cards being outclassed, which is the main problem with this card. Um, you have to play outclassed cards in order to make one good card, and uh, overall, I just don't think that's going to work. But uh, the new buff, Dinosize, we've talked about that. It's a 8 mana, set a minion to plus uh, to 10 10, which if you use it on a silverhand recruit, it's like well, and 10, 8 mana plus 9 plus 9, and then it's going to get Shadow Word Death. So it's okay, I guess, but okay isn't good enough for competitive uh, constructed play, really. It's a decent arena card, though. Uh, I mean, not not the last Kaleidos or obviously, but uh, Dino Size. So uh, we'll have to see how the buffs wrap out, and that basically determines how card how good this card is. But I am actually expecting this to be one of the worst paladin quests, given what cards you have available to activate it. It just seems too much work for too little payoff. Galvanon, of course, uh, you adapt five times. You're probably going to try to grab the cannot be targeted by spells. Uh, so that it doesn't get Shadow Wood Death or Entombed, and you just lose. Well, Entombed's not there anymore. Hmm. Yeah, rotating out of standard. Fancy that. Uh, but Shadow Wood Death, of course. Um, so you get a you get a immune to spells or immune to being targeted, which is really good and important for this card. And you almost certainly get that in one of five adapts. That's like too many chances to not get it. And maybe you miss it. Maybe you miss it. I guess it would it would give you like plus health twice, even if you already took health once. So. 30% five times, um, still seems fairly likely. And you can, of course, slap on plus three health, plus three uh, attack, divine shield. I think they have charge in there, a taunt, so you can make a solid minion. But when one really overstated minion it does not make up for having to sacrifice a card in your deck with this quest, and then having to play six crappy buff cards. I, I just don't think it's going to work, and I like the idea of buff paladin. I always wanted to play the uh, the, Valk the Valkyrie sisters that uh, benefit from buffs, but it, it just hasn't worked out yet. <sighs> okay, speaking of buffs, though, this isn't a direct target buff. For Druids, Evolving Spores. Four mana adaptive minions. Um, some people go ahead and say, well, it's kind of like Bloodlust, because you can adapt for plus three attack, and then it's only four mana, so it's a four mana Bloodlust. Well, but eh, not really. And I'm thinking that uh, each of the adapts are going to be individual. It doesn't say adapt once and give them all one effect, but rather you choose different effects for each minion. And sometimes that'll be good, and sometimes that'll be bad. Uh, it depends on if you need, like, pure damage, or if you need a combination of things, like poisonous on one guy, and then extra attack on the other, so you use the poisonous one to trade into their minion, and then you give attack to your main uh, board card. Um... And in terms of power, I, I'm uh, a little skeptical about how well this is going to perform. Obviously, it's decent in things like uh, Token Druid. Uh, I think this would probably be better than Soul of the Forest, um, because Token Druids typically need to play pretty fast, and Soul of the Forest is defensive, not what you want. But this is this can be played offensively, so you can get Poisonous on your minions, you can give it the plus attack, maybe even give a minion charge. Uh, yeah, the more I talk about it, the more I can kind of see this card being used, specifically in Token Druid. But um, aside from that, not too valuable. Really, you have to have like at least three minions on the board for this to be worth it, I think, similar to Bloodlust. Um, may see some play. It's a cute card at that, probably about appropriately statted. Uh, not enough to make it super OP, but um, in order for a deck to work, you have to have some OP finisher cards. And I don't think this is an OP finisher card. I think it's just kind of okay. Like, would you... Like, okay, for instance, Savage Roar. Three mana give you minions plus two attack. Why play this over Savage Roar? Because you can guarantee the attack, and it costs one less mana. So... Oh, and it also affects a hero. So I think 
Savage Roar outclasses this. Maybe you play one of these to try to roll that poisonous effect or the versatility of the adapt. Eh, but, you know, overall, Savage Roar just seems better to me. And that's currently not played really outside of Token Druid. But, hey, I think it would be pretty good in Token Druid. That's basically the summary of this card. Okay, next up, and I do like this card a lot, Spirit Echo, 3 mana, Shaman Spell, give you minions, Death Rattle, return this to your hand. So similar to Echo Medivh, which was a 4 mana mage spell, Goblin Sources Gnome, been out of the matter for a long time. Um, but this is like a slower version of that, because it doesn't add it to your hand, so you can't immediately replay the Battle Cries, but it costs 1 less mana. So uh, in terms of costing you tempo, it's maybe not as bad. 1 extra mana can mean a lot on turn 5 or 6. Um, the question is, what do you really want to put this on? Do you want to play it in, like, a Earth Elemental deck, where you basically try to, uh, basically wall your opponent off from being able to defeat you? Or do you play this in, like, Aggro Shaman, where you just flood the board, and then you have a lot of minions get added back to your hand when you inevitably get AoE down, and then you replay everything, and they have to deal with it again. Um... I think uh, this will be a decent card. I think they made it epic because they don't expect it to go in every deck. Um, and I don't think it'll go in every deck. But I do see this being plausible in some niche decks. So a playable card, um, one to experiment with. Uh, definitely, if you can find something that can make it work, it could be super powerful in the right circumstances. Uh, for instance, maybe a Medivh deck. Like, uh, <laughs> okay, and maybe I'm zooming too much, but Medivh the Guardian, and you play this, and then you get another Medivh, and you get to summon a 3-drop to the field, and then that 3-drop gets this effect too? Mm, could be cute. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun. I like it. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. Tortolan Primalist. 8 mana, 5, 4. Shitty stats. Uh, Battlecry, discover a spell and cast it with random targets. So, uh, hard to evaluate without seeing it in play, of course. If you get Flamestrike off of this, it's really good. Oh, and note that since they're spells, it's going to be all from your own class. Uh, I was thinking, like, Lay on Hands from Paladin. So it's like, okay, randomly heal something for 8, kind of irrelevant. And then you get to draw 3 cards, so it's like an 8 mana draw 3. Sometimes, very rarely, because it's, it's very random. Sometimes you get stuck with 3 secrets, and then you're like, wow, I just played 8 mana for 5-4 and an eye for an eye. Ouch. Um... Now, I, I think the trick to playing this card is you want to aim for those spells that have a guaranteed effect with no target. So you wouldn't pick something like Holy Light. You'd much rather go for a Consecration, because Consecration does exactly one thing, which is two damage to everything on the opponent's side of the board. Um, I don't think this will see play because it costs too much, but uh, it could be fun. I, I mean, I, I think I would try it out at least in some control decks. There could be one class or something like that that does really well with it. Maybe you put it in Warlock, because Warlock have basically two versions of Twisting, uh, Twisting Nether. Doom, which draws you cards, and then uh, Twisting Nether, which is eight mana. So if you play this as a, I really hope I get a Twisting Nether off of this, and it gets played immediately, it's like you paid eight mana for a Twisting Nether, which is fine. And, or you get Doom, and you paid eight mana for a ten mana Doom, and this card draws you an extra minion, or an extra card. So, um... And then the thing is, you don't have to play it as a Twisting Nether. It has the versatility of being a Twisting Nether. So sometimes uh, you go for the Shadow Bolt and you hope you get really lucky. Oh my god, can you imagine if this Shadow Bolted itself? That would be so bad. But maybe you go for a Hellfire or uh, just something else that's lower cost and doesn't have a target. And, um, you know, a, a minion that's flexible and sometimes lasts on the board uh, after doing something. It, it's, it's not impossible to see how this card could be decent. But to be fair, there is a mage spell, uh, a mage minion, 5 mana, 5, 4, a few sets ago, I think it's getting rotated out, where it casts a random spell that costs 5 or less, and it was not played in anything competitive really ever. Sometimes it would be okay in arena. Maybe this will be okay in arena. Probably not competitive, though. Okay, and here is like the last hope for paladin buff decks not totally sucking this expansion. Spiked, uh, spike Ridged Steed, so this gives a minion plus 2, plus 6. Uh, not a great buff, I mean, it's a little bit stronger than that new that old Shadow Word from the Old Gods expansion that Priest got and never really saw much play. Uh, but it also gives Taunt, and when it dies, it gives you a Stegadon, so that's, that's what makes this better. And the Stegadon is a 4 mana 2, 6 Taunt, and I believe, I'm not certain, but I believe this card is also going to be included just as a straight up minion you can play. So 4 mana 2, 6 Taunt Beast. 
Uh, not too bad, actually. I mean, um, the Dragon Twilight Guardian had plus one attack when you played it with the Dragon, and that was played in every Dragon deck, so, um, it's not, it's not bad. I, I think this is definitely better than something like the, uh, the basic four mana two seven turtle. Uh, but maybe it's not good enough to see play on its own. But with Spike Reed's, uh, Spike Regged Steed, I, I think this is a good trading card, good value card. You put it on a Silver Hand Recruit, and it becomes basically a 3-7 um, with Death Rattle summoning a 2-6 Taunt. Uh, so it's both defensive, good against the aggro decks, and also allows you to do some unexpected trades. So this, as a buff card, is not bad. Most of the other buff cards are pretty terrible. Um, but, you know, maybe you can play Blessing of Kings, Spike Bridge, Steed, and uh, Dino Size. Uh, Blessing of Wisdom, I do think, is underrated. That's one mana, and you could get some card draw off that. So maybe you can get enough over the course of a game, but I think you're going to need to either play a lot of really bad buff spells, or you're going to need to wait until, like, turn 25 in a control deck to get all your good buff spells in order to make that work. And at the end of the day, I think you would rather just put in something like Tyrion Forging or uh, Ragnaros Light Lord rather than all of this stuff. But... I do like this card because of its double effect. Uh, very, very weak to silence, though. We have to admit that. Okay, and uh, this guy, Cornered Sentry, 2-6 minion for Warrior. Uh, Warrior getting all those taunt cards. So Battlecry, summon 3-1-1 one, one Raptors for your opponent. If you factor in the fact that the Raptors can each do 1 damage to this, it's a 2-3 with taunt. Um, but obviously you wouldn't just play it like that. You would hope that you have a Ravaging Ghoul combo, or maybe your opponent already has a full board and you play this and then they don't get extra raptors. Um, though that's probably not a great scenario because you're already losing pretty hard at that point. Uh, you can also play this into a brawl, which if you're really desperate to remove something on your opponent's side of the for field, adds four new brawl targets and uh, that might be a good desperation play. Um, you could be done with Whirlwind. If you've seen the new Warrior Legendary, the nine mana... Uh, execute all damaged minions. It might have been only enemy minions, but it's a 9-7 beast anyway. Um, and you put this in a Whirlwind deck, so you could do 3 mana Whirlwind, summon the 2-5 uh, as for like a 3 mana combo. Hmm, iffy. Uh, but, I mean, if it kills some of your opponent's minions that they already had on the board too, then hey, it's actually not bad. But probably not great to spend 2 cards to summon a 2-5 for 3 mana. Uh, could all... Oh, well, yeah, anyway, the, the idea of War, Whirlwind having a comeback, uh, it wouldn't be bad to have it in a deck that also had this, and also had that new Legendary, but we'll have to see, um, we'll be harder to just use Revenge on stuff like that, because uh, no more Tharzan, probably for the better. Um, I think somehow this is going to see some play. Um, I, I, it just seems like the kind of card that you could kind of exploit and make it pretty good in a control deck, similar to Dirty Rat. Like, Dirty Rat, you look at it and you're like, it, it summons a random dude from your opponent's hand. That sounds terrible. You're going to give them, like, a 4-mana 7-7, seven, seven, and then you're going to lose. And sometimes that happens, but you don't play it like that. You have to find a strategic way to play it. And I, I imagine that something like that is going to occur with this card, too. So, I already mentioned Stegadon. A decent basic minion. Uh, but last card for today, and this guy's a big one. Tyrantus, 10 mana, 12, 12, cannot be targeted by spells or hero powers, and it's a druid beast. So it's good that it's in druid, because uh, I think druid has the easiest time playing a 10 drop. Um, but also note, although it looks really boring, like, oh, it's just a 12, 12, it's a 12, 12 that can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. And I think um, Slogoth the Slitherer, that 9 mana, 5, 9 taunt that can't be targeted, really kind of showed its value over the course of time. I mean, it was only played in a few niche decks, but the fact that a big taunt cannot be removed is actually quite solid. Um, now, I think you would play this more aggressively, where it's just, it's a big minion on the board that's going to kill you, and there's almost no way you can remove it. So it's actually not a bad finisher. Um, like, if you could put a Deathwing on the field and get it to stick, Deathwing is a 12-12. This is a 12-12. It's really big. It kills your Sarahs in one hit. So... I just think it's going to be really hard to answer this card. Unless you have, like, a Twisting Nether, which is a huge spell and is going to take your turn, too. Um, then this guy's just going to walk over you. You need, like, Desperation Taunts or a Poisonous Effect off of your Adapt. 
uh, or something else big. Um, also now, could be good with Madame Goya. So you swap a random minion out of your deck, and then poof, you get a 12-12 uh, by trading in, I don't know, like a Living Roots or something like that. Um, that that would be a lucky play, but that would also be a game-ending play on like turn 6. So Tyrantis, uh, it looks really basic, and uh, the thing is, I think it's going to be actually not bad. I, I could see this really being a playable card just because it's so hard to deal with. If your opponent does not have Light Bomb, which does not exist anymore because it's standard, uh, or does not have like a Silence plus a Shadow Word Death, or does not have a Twisting Nether in their hand, or does not have a Brawl, uh, then it's, there's not so many options to remove this. And obviously, you would not play this into a Brawl. That would be crazy. You have to burn the Brawl first. Um, so yeah, as long as they can't remove it, this is a game-ending card for sure. And that's what a 10 mana minion should be, right? So uh, that's going to be it for today. I've been Dark Skeleton. Thanks for watching this card review with me. And tomorrow, uh, hopefully, we're going to take a look at the rest of the cards as they get dumped and give kind of a final review of Journey to Angora. Um, overall, so far, I'm thinking it's not bad, but I do have my hesitation about thinking uh, whether... These cards can beat Jay Golem and that kind of thing, but we'll have to see. <clears throat> Until then, guys, I've been Dark Skeleton. Goodbye.